certain way of, of learning things. We call it the scientific method. There's lots of ways that you can do it, um, but we're going to talk about one specific type of way to do the scientific method. Be following a set of steps. So you have some vocabulary. There's some vocabulary that you um, will need to know in this in this unit. And uh, you have the list there. These are some of the terms that are going to be important. We're not going to go over them all right now. We'll go over them in the next couple days. But you have a list there that might be helpful for you. But before we talk about this much, let's think about an example. Let's think about a student wanted to determine if the effects, wanted to determine the effects of different colored lights on the planet girl. So she set up an experiment. She grew two plants under the conditions that are shown over here in this diagram. All right, so this is how she set up her experiment. Two plants with all of these conditions. And then at the end of the experiment, plant number one, it grew 10 centimeters. Plant number two grew 5 centimeters. And so she made the conclusion that plants grow better under red light. What do you think about her conclusion? Is that a good conclusion based on how she set this up? What do you think, Sophia? Um, no. Okay, she gave him some water though. She got water. Any other ideas, Lily? Would that interfere with the experiment? Maybe. Anything else? Frank? What about it? Yeah, that's different as well. So, yeah, plant one grew 10 centimeters, plant two grew five centimeters, but they got different amounts of water, they got different temperatures, like Frank said. So, let's go on here. So, yeah, this isn't a, a good experiment. We can't be confident in her conclusion. Okay. So, how could we? change this experiment? That's what the second question is asking us. How can we change this experiment to make it better, to improve upon it? Hey, what, what can we do? So like everything should matter, like everything equal? Oh, everything? Yeah. So you should make all these things equal? They well, should have no. the same color light? No, not that same color light. Okay. Just You're exactly right. And that to do this experiment properly, we want the light to be different. Okay? We want one to be grown under red light, one to be grown under blue light, because that's what she's studying. But like and he said, every other factor, we call those things variables. Every other variable, we should have it the same. The same temperature, the same water, the same amount of time they're growing, and the same type of plant. Then we have a better experience. Go ahead, fill that stuff in, please. Sure, 
because we change many things at once. And we're going to learn this when we have a good experiment, we change just a single thing at a time. One variable is changed, and we try to keep everything else as close to the same as possible. <coughs> All right, so we are going to learn that there are six steps to the scientific method. Now, like I said, there's other ways to phrase these, and sometimes they're not in this order, but for us, we're going to say there are six steps to the scientific method, and you're going to have to memorize the names of them. But luckily, we have um, a way to help you remember them. And so if we remember the sentence, people really hate elephants on cars, that can help us to remember the steps. Or you can remember this picture of Mr. Akiri standing on top of the car, and that might help you to um, remember the steps. So if you remember one of those things, then you can remember the steps. The first letter of each word stands for one of the steps, P-R-H-E-O-N-C. Do so anyone think they know what any of those letters might stand for? Lily, you think you know them? Yeah, the H does stand for hypothesis. Anyone know a different one? Right? Yeah, the P stands for problem. Bailey? The C stands for conclusion. You guys know some of these already. Any others? E, experiment. Research? R, research. We're missing only one, right? What about the O? Not uh. <laughs> Go ahead. So. <laughs> we talked about this on the very first day of school. Oh, I'm going to move on, Ryan. Observation. Observation. Yeah, so those are our steps of the scientific method. Go ahead and write them down. Problem. Oh, yeah. Research. Hypothesis. Experiment, observation, conclusion. Those are the steps of the scientific method. And like I said, you are going to have to remember them. I guess if your page is open on both sides, you can see the steps. Right? You know what I'm So if you remember the sentence, you remember the steps. <clears throat> but not only will we have to know what the steps are, we have to know sort of what they mean. And so I know you've heard some of these words. Others might be new to you. <sighs> so let's start with the first one, the problem. another picture. The problem. So when we start off and we're trying to learn some new information, scientists start with a problem. And in this, the problem is a question that we're asking. A question that we're asking. I may want to know, do students do better on a math quiz if they eat beforehand? They eat a sandwich beforehand. Mm -hmm. That's a question I could ask. And I can try to set up an experiment that would help me to answer that question. So that would be my problem. That's the first step. Second step, then, is you need to do a little bit of background research before you can um, start setting up your experiment. You gather some other information to help you prepare. For example, I may have to find like a math quiz that I can give everybody. Appropriate and difficult. I may need to have to research if any of my subjects have allergies to any foods. So I need to get some information before I can really get going on my experiment. Oh. All right. So we do some. We have a question. 
question, we research it a little bit, and then we can come up and start to work on our hypothesis. Now, I know many of you can give me a definition of hypothesis, but I'm going to change it on you. I know the definition you want. So who can give me the definition that you know for sure? A hypothesis is what, Faith? That's what, yeah, that's what you guys learn in elementary school, educated guess. That's an okay definition, but I have better one. Okay. It is an educated guess, sort of. But um, really what you're doing when you set up your hypothesis is you're making a prediction. You're saying, I think this is what's going to happen in my experiment. I really like prediction better. So it's a prediction about what you think is going to happen. what your hypothesis is, your prediction. Before you even do your experiment, you sort of guess as to what the outcome is going to be. So my question I'm asking is, would students do better on a math quiz after they eat a sandwich? What's your hypothesis about my problem? Say we have a good experiment. Um, yes. So, yeah, it's just yes. I think students would do better on a math quiz if they did a sandwich. Or maybe your hypothesis is no, I do not think they'll do better after they did a sandwich. You just sort of make your prediction. What do you think? And it's okay if it's wrong. It doesn't matter. You don't go back and change it when your experiment's done because you still learn some valuable information even when your hypothesis is wrong. Okay, so. We have our prediction. Well, somehow we need to test our prediction. We need to see if our hypothesis was correct or not. And that's what the experiment is. The experiment is some kind of procedure, some activity that you do to see if your hypothesis is correct or not. Same people are taking, so their math abilities is the same today as it is tomorrow. 
So we're going to get a better result. We can be more confident in our um, answer. Okay. My next step then is I make some observations. Observations in, an ex in a science are when you're collecting data from your experiment. You're observing what happened in your experiment. What kind of data do I collect in my experiment that I'm talking about? What would be the data, Frank? say in my example experiment that the grades were the same on both days. What would the, the correct conclusion be then if the grades were the same? Okay? That it didn't work. Well, yeah, that my hypothesis was what? It was wrong. That was wrong. It was incorrect. The data did not support my hypothesis in that experiment. Any questions about the steps? All right, let's do one more example then. Let's say I want to do an experiment with mice or rats. Okay? I'm going to ask the question. That's my problem. The question I want to ask is, do mice grow larger if they are given vitamin C? That's a question I could ask. That's a question that I can set up an experiment and answer that question. Those are all little pieces of information I want to know in advance. Okay, so now I need to make a hypothesis. Somebody give me a hypothesis about this experiment. <coughs>
else? Your hypothesis. The question I'm asking is, do mice grow larger if they get a vitamin C? Ryan, what, what do you think? What's your hypothesis? Doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. What do you think? What 
about size? Like that's not that specific. Like, yeah, maybe the length of the mouse. Maybe what else could I um, do, Brennan? The weight. Maybe the mass. Good. Yeah, those are things I can measure. Here in my example, I said weight, but length would be fine. I weigh the mice after two weeks, and let's say my observations are that. The vitamin C mice weigh the same as the non-vitamin C mice. Bailey? Has this experiment actually been done before? Not that I know of. Why do you want to know what the real answer is? Yeah. Why don't you, do you have any mice at home? No. You probably buy some of like PetSmart and do this experiment. I don't want to touch mice. Are you? I've ever seen no, little white mice. They're actually kind of cute. They're frozen. 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 Living mice? No, they're frozen and dead. Frozen dead mice? Huh? Ew, that's gross. <laughs> that's really nasty. I used to have a snake and my snake ate them. Ew. All right, well, if this, these are my observations, what would my conclusion be? No. So this is my observation. Frank, what would, I, what would you say for a conclusion here? Yeah, my theory, my hypothesis was incorrect. In this example, the mice did not grow larger when given extra vitamin C. Is it okay that my yeah. hypothesis was wrong? Yes. Yeah. Should I go back and erase it? No. No, it's okay. Your hypothesis can be wrong. That's fine. Okay. You still learn something. I've still learned some valuable information from my experiment. It's just not what I had predicted. Okay. Sway. Sway. So why is Mario here? Because he is awesome. He is pretty awesome. Well, I'm, I'm more partial. To yeah, I'm, I'm more partial to Luigi sick. myself. Um, no. What? So, do you guys ever? Use the scientific method? No. Not really. When's the last time you sat down and wrote out your problem research hypothesis? Yes, in science class, probably. All right, so, but that's not the question I asked. Do you ever do the scientific method and maybe not formally write it down and think about it this way? What would be an example of you doing an experiment? I've heard about it. Playing like Mario Kart and saying you're gonna beat your friend when you don't. Okay, let's go a little. Let's, let's use Mario Kart as an example. Okay. Um, so your hypothesis. We need to have some variables there. So what is a hypothesis you could test? Not just that you beat your friend, because your friend might just be better at Mario Kart than you, right? So let's let's go a little bit farther. You got under the wall. Okay. All right, well, I need a couple groups here and stuff. Sophia? That Mario is better than Luigi. How would you do that? Because uh, we beat Bowser. <laughs> How would I set that up? So maybe you have the same person, right? Because you want to be the same ability at Mario Kart. One round, you use Mario. The next round, you use Luigi. What do you have to be sure? Should you do, um, you have to be sure do you want the one in space, and then the other one is the desert track? No. I forget what they're called. I do too, I always fall. Me too. Yeah. So no, what do you have to do, Sophia? You have to make sure, um, that you have, like, you do the same course and you slide in the same, like, use the same course. You need the same track? What's the star one called? Oh, Rainbow, Rainbow Road. Road. Rainbow Road. Right. So you want to do them on Rainbow Road. You want to use the same car. You don't want to use a 25cc car one time and then the 50cc car the next time. You have to use the same car. Um, what would your hypothesis be? Whose hypothesis is that Mario would win? Wow. Luigi? How about the same? No one thinks 
the same? Does changing a little character change how he races? I wouldn't think so. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. Well, you can conduct that experiment at home tomorrow when you get home this week. I'm not going to be your task. So yes, my point is we do use the scientific method all the time. You just don't really think about it. You know, maybe you play a sport. Um, maybe you play soccer, and you want to know well, if I strike the ball on this side of the ball, how does that affect the path of the ball? And you may do it several times. You have your hypothesis. If I strike the right side of the ball, it'll bend to the left. Mm -hmm. You have that hypothesis. You try it out in an experiment. You observe what happens, and you're really doing the All right, see you later.